So good afternoon, everyone. Thank you uh, today for joining us. Thanks to Navarajan University and Advantage for collaborating. Um, so presentation. Uh, agenda of the day. So uh, I'll be first giving uh, we uh, having uh, five minutes of uh, presentation from Navish University. Then we'll having a symposium for 20-25 minutes and then uh, the speaker for the day today is Mr. Satish Kumaragiri. He, he is from Advantage. I'll be sharing more about him later. So Let's start. Uh, Advantage was established in 2013, Pune, and it's a design and engineering services company, which is offering new product development solutions and consumer durables for customers globally. And Advantage creates disruptive solutions through design changing markets and helps businesses to grow and adapt and face challenges and as it says embrace design embrace growth you can learn more about advantages by visiting advantages.com so the speaker for the day is uh, mr satish komaragiri he is the managing partner of advantages design uh, i think he will be the better so i'll allow him to introduce himself uh, when he starts the symposium so I'll quickly uh, brief you about SICA, uh, what SICA services are, what is SICA doing, and then we'll... So Composite Excellence Center of Asia, it is the center of excellence uh, set up by ADAPT and accomplished professionals from composite industries, academics, and research organizations. SICA is supported with ceramic technologists, polymer technologists, chemical engineers, geologists, and much more. through technical support, technical training, arranging technical and financial collaborations and symposiums like this uh, with composite companies from developed quarters from Europe and uh, SICA also especially focuses on future generation to support and guide them for securing employment in composite field through support in their education, training, internship and finally selecting the right career including higher education guidance in foreign universities. Uh, the mission of SICA is uh, that we are dedicated to create a better everyday life in the composite manufacturing system and their professionals in Asia through lean techno-commercial business transformation. Uh, our vision has been very clear that we are working together globally with the team of passionate, talented and dedicated pool of technology leadership to meet and greet the needs and expectation of tomorrow of composites. So uh, I'll quickly share the area of our services uh, in terms of materials, we generally Companies who deal in such materials, aramides, carbon fiber, core epoxy, natural fibers, polyester, fabrics, and much more. Uh, in terms of processes, uh, we are into additive manufacturing, compression molding, protrusion, RTM spray ups, injection molding, and much more. If we talk about the markets that we can, aerospace, automotive, construction, defense, marine, and much more. Uh, this is our core support team uh, Dr. Ake Singh, NP Sharma sir, Chandran Palon sir, Dr. Anshuman, Frank Weisky, and Hiral Ma'am. Uh, I'll quickly share about the memberships of SICA. The individual annual membership is absolutely free. You can download the membership from uh, form from sikaasia.com slash membership. 
Uh, the honorary life membership, it's again free, but it is being nominated by SICA members. Uh, corporate membership, which is a paid membership, and the cost is and one sixty US dollars per annum. Membership. The memberships uh, includes professionals, academicians, professors, researchers, students associated with composite benefit. Universities, uh, research and training organizations, and they all membership is absolutely free, as I say, as I said. So welcome, be the villager of World Composite Village. Help yourself community by being a member of SICA. SICA is on a mission to make it composite manufacturing by the year 2013. So we believe that more the members, more easier it will be to reach the goal. Uh, the honorary membership, as I said, it's a life membership, uh, which is being granted uh, based on recommendations from our members, the core group, the professional partners, and the uh, the team of SICA Asia. Uh, normally, uh, they are the people who have served the composite seal for more than 20 years, and they have some memorable contribution in their areas, and this membership is, again, absolutely free. If I talk about Sika Asia services, so Sika Asia provides manpower data bank. It is again a free service to the fraternity that we provide. We try to bridge the gap between the people who are looking forward to have a career in composite uh, and industries who are looking for talented uh, skill set. Uh, Sika Asia Common Queue, it's a bi monthly newsletter. Every uh, every two months uh, on the Sika website, it's a digital digital common queue. Uh, Sika Asia directory, it's an online directory which is again going to be uh, launched soon on sikaasia.com, along with the panel consultant list and the tool designer list that we that are associated with Sika. So we're very proud enough that Sika is doing so much uh, for the composite fraternity, and together we can uh, really achieve the, our goal of making it the pioneer hub of composites. Uh, Training and certification that Sika provides. In terms of technical training on composites, uh, quality improvement training, specialization courses that are made for composites. So, if I talk about short term and online, uh, short term online and offline courses available as of now, they are composite material processing, analysis, and uh, composite materials and structures, processing and fabrication, analysis and design. This is again a one week course, uh, mechanics of composites for engineering application. It's a three week course, and we have a one week course on CFRP. If I talk about uh, another short term courses, these are uh, Six Sigma Green Belt Certification and Six Sigma Black Belt Certification. It's a four days online in house training course. Uh, uh, it can happen both on weekend and weekdays courses, and we can customize it according to the needs uh, of the customer. Uh, long term courses, uh, like I, I believe uh, in, in a month we'll be starting with NDT for advanced composites. It's a 50 hours course, uh, it, and the trainer is Mr. Chandran Kunal. Uh, Mr. Chandran Kolon, uh, he is absolutely the best uh, in terms of NDT, if I, if I know anyone in India. Uh, mechanics of Composites, it's a five day course. Uh, so, you know, uh, to see all the available and upcoming courses uh, or events. So, these are the success partners that we have. Uh, achieved in last uh, couple of years. So we are very proud enough that we uh, uh, that we are able to uh, touch, we are so uh, thank you so much for patiently listening to me. But I have a very, very amazing thing to share with you that uh, SICA is going to organize India's first composite uh, industry national conference, SYNC 2022. Uh, it is going to happen in the month of September on 17th and 18th. We are very, very excited about this. Uh, we are doing this uh, in association with Katira, Ahmedabad, SSME, ISRO, and Navrachna University, Baroda. Uh, we are thanks to our managing partners, All in Motion IT Solutions and Blooming Creatives. You can visit sync.sikkaiju.com to know more about it. This is going to be a really, really mega event. So thank you so much for patiently listening to me. Uh, I'll quickly uh, hand it over to uh, Hiral Ma Thank you, Prashant. 
I'll please give me the confirmation whether my screen is visible to you or not. Sure, man. You can. Uh, sh I hope the screen is visible. Hey, ma'am. Yeah. So, uh, very good afternoon to one and all present here. I, Dr. Hilal Parik from Navarashana University, and welcome you all for this one-day webinar on light weighting of uh, EV bus system. Uh, let me quickly uh, brief about the Navarachana University. That the Navarachana University was established through the Gujarat Private University Act in 2009 with the intent to offer the superior education that benefit with the intent to offer the higher educational standards of the Navarachana Education Society in Vadodara. Five schools that comprise the Navarachana University, School of Liberal Studies and Education, School of Science, School of Business and Law, School of Environmental Design and Architecture, and School of Engineering and Technology, which commenced in the year of 2012. School of Engineering and Technology, following the tradition of Navrashna University and the Navrashna Education Society, is unique in offering the interdisciplinary education along with the traditional one. School of Engineering and uh, Technology that offers the undergraduate programs, postgraduate programs, and the PhD programs. In the undergraduate, it offers BTEC in Mechanical Engineering, BTEC in Tripoli, BTEC in Civil Engineering, BTEC in Computer Science and Engineering, Information Technology, BSc Data Science, and BCA. For the post graduation level, it offers MTech in Thermal Engineering, MTech in Power System Engineering, MTech in Structural Engineering, and MTech in Computer Science and Engineering. The school is also offering the research programs under the different disciplines. There are various initiatives that is taken by the school for the uh, benefit of the students. And one of that, it is a SSIP cell, which is a student startup and the innovation policy cell, where the students are funded with the research grant for uh, doing their project work, doing their innovative project works, and to uh, do the pattern for that innovation projects. The school is emphasized on the project-based learning and the internship to provide and to improve the employability. Coach project is a key feature of the Navrashna University education, which brings the social awareness among the students. And here, the students are working on the social problem and find out the technical uh, solution for that particular problem. The school is encouraging uh, the interdisciplinary education by providing uh, interdisciplinary elective courses. There are bridge courses for the undergraduate programs, and there are uh, mandatory courses for enhancement of the entrepreneurship skill for the students and the communication skill for the students. There are certain best practices which the school is following. That is a project-based learning where the more emphasis is given on the hands-on practice. Also, the more emphasis is given on the laboratory work. The final semester student for the undergraduate program, they will go for the internship program for the industries and for the post-graduation students, they will have a one-year internship program with the industries. The school is also offering a minor specialization like BTEC Mechanical, they have a minor specialization in robotics. BTEC uh, Computer Science and Tripoli have a minor specialization in IoT and BTEC Civil Engineering have a minor specialization in uh, structural engineering. The school is very much keen to organize a various industrial visit and the guest lecture to identify the present need of the industry so that they can cater the need of the industries and make the student make the students ready for the industries. There is a very uh, I can say that it's a very essential features of the set that is a faculty of the School of Engineering and Technology. The faculty members are associated with IITs, NITs, and uh, very reputed private universities for their research work. Many of the faculty members are pursuing their PhD, and uh, many of the faculty members are going to pursue their PhD members in the short span. The Navarashana University is always uh, uh, always uh, 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 intending in the research promotion policies and under that the university is providing a seed grant for the fresh teachers up to the one lakh rupees the university is also providing a financial support for uh, the filing the patents and for the innovative projects and the model making school of engineering and technology <clears throat> is also having the research environment. Many of the faculty members are pursuing their research and many of the faculty members, they have begged their project 
for the different funding agencies like DRDO, uh, UGC, DST, SCRB, and UGC, and many more uh, uh, funding agencies through which they have pursued their research projects. There is a research environment in the, in the School of Engineering and Technology, which, which is, can be proved uh, by seeing that the many faculty members are involved in the consultancy work uh, with the industries, and they are having a collaborative work with the industries. The faculty members are also have a patent, published patent in their credit. Faculty members are also involved in uh, guiding the research projects. Many of the students, they have registered in the School of Engineering and Technology for pursuing their research. There are, uh, the School of Engineering and Technology is uh, having a very good research publications in the past few years. Also, the school is uh, very much organizing uh, in conferences, seminars, and the webinars. And uh, the school is pursuing the grants from the various funding agencies like JEDA, Gooch Coast, and many other government and the private sectors. The school is also having an international collaboration with the Carleton University Canada and the Binghamton University uh, New York, USA. Under this, the school is having a student exchange program and also they are organizing a joint seminar series where the faculty members and the student, students are getting benefit of this. The school is also very much equipped with the high tech laboratories. And under this, I would like to mention a few uh, high-tech laboratories or the state-of-art laboratories like uh, high-performance computer laboratories, deep learning server, robotic arms, uh, CNC lathe machines, and many more. We are also having a MOU with a, with a very good industries like MGVCL, Jetco, and the Siemens. And our students are placed with the different, different big name companies like Zometo, Baijus, TCS, Colabera, uh, Mercedes branch and the Siemens. Students are also very active and they are participating in the various activities. They are also having a various chapters and the clubs like ACME student chapter, Hack Club, Google DST, Mosh at NUV, Automates at NUV and Technology Banyan Club. All these clubs and the chapters that is uh, governed by the students only. Various activities will be uh, various activities is done by the students. They are organizing a various event under this particular chapters and the club. The students are not only participating in the technical event, but they are also very much into the non-technical events, extracurricular activities. Like like two of our uh, mechanical engineering students, they have recently participated in 26th January parade in New Delhi. We are very much proud about uh, the, uh, alum our alumni performance and our alumni, uh, they have uh, placed with a very reputed companies and, that, and they got recognition from uh, their work which they have done in that industries. They were awarded with the various awards and our alumni, they have also have a patent in their credit. Our alumni, they have also have entrepreneurship they, uh, they have started their own startup and uh, uh, they are doing very good in that startup. School of Engineering and Technology and the Navrashna University is always supporting the students to pursue their dreams. And uh, we uh, always wish our students and will always uh, remain behind their success. So I, with this, I would like to conclude and hand over to Prashant. Uh, thank you so much, Ril, ma'am. Uh, Navrashna University is one of, uh, I can say, not just uh, a state like really uh, i have seen students coming uh, from outside to study in Navrashna. so it, it, it's a really amazing university they, they, the the courses the the professors the teachers they are really we kick start our symposium i request mr satish kumaragiri to uh, start over to you sir yeah uh, good afternoon, uh, everyone. It is great to hear from Giral, madam, and uh, good to know about uh, uh, the courses. So right now, I will share my screen about uh, Advanced uh, and light waiting. Everybody can see the screen. Uh, yes, so we can see the screen now. Great. So uh, basically, uh, today's topic is uh, uh, right, light weighting uh, of EV bus design. And uh, it is becoming more and more relevant uh, that electric uh, vehicles uh, are uh, very much in, uh, needed both for, uh, uh, let's say, economic reasons and also for uh, 
fuel uh, and pollution and uh, various uh, uh, other benefits by using electric vehicles and uh, buses are one of the uh, best solution because they always move from point a to b and return so we can uh, always um, have a range prediction in the sense like how many kilometers a vehicle is moving and according to that we can design whereas uh, if it is a passenger car other things we need a lot of infrastructure then only that adaptation is there so a uh, government also identified this buses uh, uh, and two wheeler and three wheeler kind of uh, low range and last mile connectivity as one of the initial uh, bearing that is why if you see a lot of fame schemes have been developed but right now we will focus on lightweighting uh, design before that uh, i will say that what is advantage advantage is named after advantage design uh, basically i am a designer from uh, national institute of design uh, ahmedabad i have studied post graduation there and before that i have done um, uh, bachelor of architecture from jntu hyderabad uh, i am uh, a styling designer by profession but uh, by working in tata uh, i have developed uh, uh, mostly the engineering skills required for designing developing and uh, prototyping Uh, during those process where i was uh, working i have developed a lot of uh, um, let's say understanding about composites um, uh, ranging from uh, uh, frp um, to smc and uh, to even carbon fiber for designing them uh, the car bodies or chassis uh, parts uh, or uh, different automotive parts so if you see advantages what services we give to uh, industry Uh, most of the startups or even oems come for uh, new product development they are looking for something new what in in form of look feel shape features user convenience and uh, uh, innovations so we will research that initially what kind of uh, product and how it can be made and then uh, next we uh, after this research phase we enter into uh, the automotive uh, Uh, styling and surfacing which is a very very unique thing for advantage because uh, we create uh, something like a very uh, unique design which uh, has become uh, mostly the uh, success uh, for automotive uh, based on the design if you see all the bikes three wheelers cars uh, they are all been very nicely designed and Uh, people want to buy them and uh, they have value for money kind of thing that is what the designing is but to uh, this is a very creative process and it is uh, it it is uh, abstract sketching i will explain in one or two slides but that has to be converted into a good surfaces uh, even in uh, if you are using uh, the composites uh, the surface quality only comes through a good quality surfacing where we use elias uh katia kind of softwares uh, to convert the abstract uh, artistic work to a uh, skin surface the real magic is in the here converting an artwork to a mathematical uh, two level uh, kind of design and we also work in uh, embedded systems mechanical engineering and uh, integration and prototyping and we create uh, uh, show vehicles and should this particular show vehicle what you are seeing in the right side uh, that is an atul auto uh, which is now in the market atul rick is the brand name that is all made in composites initial uh, prototype so if you see this uh, particular funnel uh, this is one of the important uh, uh, philosophy of advantages where uh, we do not copy or reverse engineer any existing design we always make a new Uh, and then we always feel that a thorough process will make a very successful uh, uh, products to be launched uh, in the market the thorough process is uh, uh, a funnel down and uh, pyramidal uh, structure where funnel down with a lot of opportunities in the market you have feasibility in terms of technology see composites also comes under one kind of process technology so we, uh, whenever people say that we want uh, 10000 pieces so what kind of composites you are thinking when you are thinking of let's say uh, 500 pieces what kind of composites you are thinking like that that feasibility studies are done through all the parts of the product including uh, certain uh, in, uh, patents so we also file lot of patents for our customers and ourselves uh, so if there is any patent available uh, and and we want to design 
uh, more than that so we can uh, do more research and then apply our own patents and still get into the market and then um, apart from uh, these technological and market opportunity there is a real need is there so what happens is we work with very closely the users um, uh, whether uh, this much of technology is needed or this much of uh, uh, let's say cost he can afford so after which a strategy is made and given to the customer the decision is made uh, once the decision is made it is uh, mostly a uh, lot of investment it seeks for product development whether it is a vehicle bus car even a product you have to have a proper planning teams has to be allocated uh, design uh, we means we means industrial design form and shape we create form and shape and uh, prototyping kind of things and engineering we translate these ideas uh, engineering faculties many uh, like as you can all uh, integrate uh, while you are branching out after 12 but when you are in profession you are converging it again in engineering we can say mechanical uh, electronics electrical uh, and even software embedded systems all these things integrate and become a product Uh, and uh, having a good knowledge of your core engineering stream and parallel uh, knowledge uh, uh, of other streams will definitely help as a uh, new product development product engineer and then there is a lot of validation which requires because all these vehicles on road they have to run for so many kilometers uh, even for composites uh, the validation is very important like what happens in uh, all weather conditions moisture conditions uh, very uh, temperature in uh, minus degrees um, it, uh, coefficient of expansion and uh, contraction so we have to go through all these uh, kind of validation and testing uh, which will be uh, from uh, indian agencies like ari and icat we work uh, closely with them along with our partners and then that product comes into production so we will give you one or two examples like how it is done so this is our team basically myself as founder of this uh, company in 2013 and um, uh, i have worked in uh, godrej tata electric in johnson controls in germany especially i was working in uh, dashboards and seating systems uh, when i was in johnson controls i have got exposure to lot of uh, uh, composites there also and uh, uh, i have worked with major customers uh, in bus coach uh tractor two wheelers and three wheelers uh and then uh, our technical head mr uh, sachin pawar uh, he is from ms aerospace uk and he has worked uh, in robert bosch uh, for so many years and then he is uh, uh, good in chassis systems and engineering we have styling head mr sanket kotekar he is uh, b electronics mds and then uh, mr upendra uh, sir who is from iisc bangalore and he is into research um and uh, development and he has worked in tata motors reval damler and uh, kpit and we have harsha who is pursuing right now bits plan mtech and also he is good in electrical systems so with this team like let's uh, directly jump into the topic of the day ev bus design um, and development especially focusing on lightweight so basically what advantage offers is uh, the total design solution such which we are working on many bus projects Uh, especially why we have chosen bus is uh, composite is very relevant to bus and if, especially if it is an electric bus um, uh, it requires a lot of uh, light weighting and optimization op <coughs> optimization so if you see our services right from the market research bus styling like how it look and feel has to be there and engineering wise uh, structural optimization and composite optimization even glass weight how you can reduce uh, yeah so those kind of uh, things we see Uh, and then prototyping activity development of uh, fixtures and other things and bus code and uh, and ari so that we'll get a customer get a complete solution from us so if you are thinking about ev uh, many people uh, are very much well versed right now what is an ev but if you talk about a bus so bus uh, typically is having very high voltages Uh, so it might be around 600 volts or to 800 volts so typically if you are having a battery of a bus uh it will be uh very uh, uh heavy uh, in its weight uh, and then it high voltage systems are there so you have to uh you have to safeguard the entire wire harness so that the shocks are not uh, going to pass to any of the human passengers uh, and for that we need lot of uh, 
enclosures, which uh, where again uh, ceiling IP67 kind of uh, design comes in. But when it comes to, let's say, other uh, part like motor or transaxle, which we call like directory motor, uh, gearbox and transaxle nowadays, which is uh, very much uh, you guys uh, are able to see in three wheelers and four wheelers. So, but apart from that, there are a lot of electrical and electronics architecture is there uh, where all these controllers like uh, vehicle control and uh, engine, uh, sorry, uh, motor control uh, and uh, converter, uh, converters like DC DC converters uh, and uh, power distribution units, like the, all these becomes a, a challenge to package. Uh, so uh, we have to use uh, composite because the best property they do have is um, they are not good conductors of electricity. So that is one of the, uh, let's say, uh, thought process uh, where uh, people use uh, uh, so much in buses, especially electric buses. Uh, and even uh, they are eliminating entire metal structure and creating a composite uh, modular panels uh, in bus industry. Uh, so uh, to do lightweight, uh, we have two options. One is the structure of the bus, uh, which can be made in aluminum or high strength steel with uh, uh, less weight. And, uh, and also like you stick uh, steel instead of weld so that uh, you can save some uh, weight. And body panels uh, to compensate the battery weight, basically. Um, and good stability is called. We got good stability in the bus because uh, the center of gravity, if you put uh, the batteries in uh, near the chassis or let's say monocoque uh, under these uh, uh, passengers, you get a lot of advantage in uh, rollover. Uh, but however, like I will say that we'll start with styling. Styling always starts with the design philosophy, like how it is. Like uh, we are doing some work with Ashok Leland which is now in the market, like it's like e Eagle, like we have taken abstract uh, kind of thing. And we, and we, Eagle is approaching and descending. So when a bus is approaching and descending, so we have taken the philosophy of approach and descending and then made those wing curves uh, in the design. And uh, why I am uh, saying uh, here is, so this is actually approaching. Uh, if you if you stand in any bus, bus shelter, you see this bus is approaching with a lifted wings. And when it is departure, it is uh, with a closed wings. And these kind of uh, artistic representation is only possible uh, through low volume composites uh, rather than any, in car you actually go for injection molding in sheet metal because you make them in lakhs of millions of pieces, that's what. But in buses, uh, you have thousands. So composites inherently come here. So styling comes like that. And then um, uh, there will be a lot of debate on what component is made how. If you just uh, look at these particular two images, this is a front fascia, entire thing is a composite panel uh, or um, culmination of composite panel. You can say a bumper, a grill, uh, two bezels, light bezels, and uh, entire front fascia structure uh, like that. So all these things, how it is made, generally they are made in FRP, like sheet molding, compound, SMC, through RTM process to get uh, uh, uniform thickness and lightweight. Um, and uh, some parts are also done in vacuum forming, uh, especially the interiors. Uh, but when you stick to uh, composites like light bezels are also made, bumpers are also made with aluminum uh, structure embedded uh, uh, so that they become stronger. And we the, there is a, a several methods to make a composite uh, lightweight um, and then uh, optimize between the cost and uh, production uh, process, if we, more laborious to less laborious when it comes to RTM that you are injecting uh, uh, resin transfer mold, like as it sounds, uh, you are transferring resin um, uh, so that it is more automated and you get uniform thickness. So you have lesser manpower to finish uh, the output, like uh, generally after FRP, they will finish uh, for painting, that amount of work is reduced. So this is generally how the bus design, the approach uh, for bus design, right from getting a character of what you want, and it is to be distinctive. It, uh, this shape should not be same uh, or similar to any other uh, bus or any other competitor. So that freedom uh, composites are giving. So if you see these buses, 
all these buses which are already manufactured these are all turned in composites and this is uh, generally a bus uh, rear fascia and front fascia and some mud flaps uh, wheel arches uh, rvms rear view mirrors that two projecting out mirrors all those things comes uh, uh, under uh, this uh, uh, composites so uh, let us think how we develop composite uh, for interiors so if you see interiors Uh, very, we are all well versed of uh, well versed with car mm -hmm. with injection molding and textures. But in composites also, a lot of textures, uh, colors are uh, for our CMF. We call it as color uh, material finish. We will use uh, painting techniques uh, like sp uh, sprinkle, uh, like sand finish, or we will dip these panels into. Uh, films thin films when create a kind of uh, let's say uh, wooden texture onto the uh, composites we also work on uh, uh, etching etching on the surface which is like a rubber texture and that is for the surface uh, texture uh, concerned for the uh, frp panels but if you are talking uh, much more in depth like how we will make the inner structure uh, like here in interiors as you can see Uh, apart from the seeds, uh, there are which are actually uh, taken from a supplier. Even a supplier uses uh, some of the composites uh, in making the seeds. Um, but if you talk about the bus uh, to be designed and built, uh, side panels, hat tracks, roof panels, uh, uh, all can be composites. Um, whether it can be sheet metal compound or FRPs or let's say any other process, you can use. Uh, ABS vacuum forming is used. It is slightly different, but uh, uh, let's say if you see what composite plastics we are using is fiber and resin plastic vacuum forming. Uh, uh, we we use sandwich layers uh, to make uh, composite uh, this thing. Say like, like for example, Senoplast is one uh, trademark company. They have a composite plastic which can be vacuum formed. And uh, if you see Reva ETO, uh, that particular panels. They don't require any painting. The panels are uh, itself glaze finished, like uh, glass finish. So that is uh, a composite which is doing vacuum forming and sheet molding compound SMC. The Tata Auto Coms, Mahindra Auto Coms. Many people are doing a lot of work in this area, uh, which is very interesting. Uh, a lot of PhD people are also there, uh, lightweighting the entire see the load bodies. Today we are seeing load bodies in aluminium. Uh, uh, sheet metal is very common, but uh, SMC load bodies. Uh, 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 we can see now which are manufactured in some of these organizations like uh, Tata Coms. Yeah, if you get a chance, you visit. So these are the uh, uh, typical uh, benchmarks we also have when we use in our design. Injection molding is only required when there is a lot of uh, volume, um, uh, and then uh, reaction injection molding or double shot injection molding. So basically, there is a way that you use metal rubber. Uh, together, so according to the requirement of the uh, component, we use aluminum structure is replacing steel. Uh, special uh, extrusions are made right now in China. Uh, there are buses which are now proven with uh, aluminum extrusions. Uh, aluminum uh, composites are also there. Uh, aluminum sandwich with resins like Alcosan. Like you might see, a lot of things are used in building construction. Now those things are also coming into uh, automobile industry. Especially, uh, uh, especially there are law, uh, there are techniques which have improved in welding and riveting, and also uh, the best thing right now happened in the industry is they are using gluing all the panels and structures instead of welding or any uh, screw and bolt. They are gluing with uh, high strength adhesives. That is also comes under composites. So in that way, the technology is changing. The life of the product is increasing. The weight, structural stability, and uh, uniformity is increased. Uh, this is what we use uh, in our bus design and uh, from the traditional uh, bus design, which you can see in bus bodybuilders uh, who are making. And what we make is is totally a, a sea of changes there. Uh, so typically, for those who understand. Uh, let's say top view of the bus, where the driver console and uh, let's say uh, gangway passage is there, and lot of uh, seats are there. So we have to plan uh, entire interior panels. Uh, where are uh, these things come? Now this image will give you 
how much composites that a, a place is available uh, to do in a typically a luxury bus coach and uh, design so uh, next time when you visit any uh, let's say uh, bus you will uh, try to observe uh, there is a lot of scope for composites uh, and then uh, either in the uh, form of uh, uh, smc or frp or even alco sign panels paneling work so uh, and uh, this is widely used in industry now uh, industry is transforming uh, themselves into electric buses so you can see most of things coming and this is how uh, from a conceptual design uh, to let's say uh, i was uh, mentioning earlier getting the wooden truck uh, structure and all those things colors different uh, this thing so this is much uh, to give the premium feel as you all know like Uh, india uh, indian make in india so these uh, uh, design uh, these kind of processes will make our product premiums which are manufactured in india and that is what we are uh, here as an advantage company to create indian manufacturers to be globally competitive in terms of uh, the premium look design and in fact composites have helped us the company like advantage uh, a great uh, level player like uh, composite technologies uh, are available uh, um, at a very uh, affordable prices but achieved achievement of this uh, quality can be international so in a way without composites advantage would have not got to the position where it is today and if you see in interiors also like our hard track and roof panels so and uh, typically how the light weighting uh, the topic is actually how to do the light weight there are lot of people who can add lot of weight in the composite itself uh, composite by by means it is not e uh, equivalent weight or uh, let's say uh, it will be always less than sheet metal it is not uh, like that if you do not use properly the composites you, in the edges uh, if you do hand lap and lot of thickness is coming and uh, you are adding so much of uh, unnecessary Uh, materials or um, uh, structures inside a composite then it becomes uh, equally uh, uh, we equally weight compared to the uh, other process like sheet metal so how we do is we will sandwich see there is always composite itself is mix of many things but we also sandwich it with uh, structure um, so that uh, in unison the structure and the composite work as a unit uh, it is like your muscle and skeleton so uh, how uh, nicely you can uh, marry them both will make the product life more longer with very less material uh, infusion into it so uh, for each panel like there is a lot of detailing uh, one advantage of composite is it can take all the requirement of mounting of all other parts because the rigid parts are bought out parts which is like windshield wiper lamps fog lamp number plate but composite can become any shape like of course uh, mold mold direction or tool direction is there but it can encompass it all the shapes and become a unified character so this example of the right surface is how we are manipulating uh, a number plate a, a dicky, opening a dicky boot uh, for a spare wheel and a lamp a bezel uh, mounting and a fog lamp Uh, and making them aesthetically good but only composite can do this job wonderfully uh, integrating everything and here also uh, this is the lamp which is integrated into it um, and if you see this uh, the lightweight body structure which is a monocoque right now uh, and the front composite and rear composite has been integrated um, this is uh, this is how uh, generally we develop uh, buses and there is a lot of uh, uh, analysis work goes on for optimization uh, there are a lot of uh, partners who actually help us in uh, uh, getting this work done uh, uh, the composites require uh, more understanding about the material strength ergonomic thickness we actually take 1 square feet by 1 square feet by 3 mm thickness composite and give it to the lab and uh, get the strength of material Uh, which uh, what resin and what hardness we have given so what is that uh, regular our own uh, uh, development and we add uh, layers like uh, uh, fiberglass cloth uh, surface coat 
uh, chicken mesh, uh, uh, aluminum mesh, uh, and those kind of things we add, and we will combinedly take the strength and we will put it to the CAD and see how best they are faring. So the world uh, it doesn't uh, has come very far from a over design to very much optimized design, and very much optimized design you can uh, save a lot of money. Second thing is you give good life. Uh, wherever necessary, there the strength is given. And also the range of the vehicle of a single charge, at least by 30 kilometers, you can improve if you can do a proper design coming from the existing design. So, of course, we take care of ergonomics. And if you see a uh, very important thing in bus design, and you cannot make lightweighting as your main priority uh, because the safety is your main priority. So if you see that trapezium blue color, this is the survival space. Whatever you do, whether with structure or composites, that survival space should not be breached. So this is how we uh, develop a lightweight uh, solution. At the same time, uh, the, uh, the engineering is done uh, for, with this survival space in mind. And uh, we have full-fledged prototyping, uh, let's say, team. And we have all the 3D printing, CNC machines and everything where we will uh, develop full-fledged prototypes, including buses. Uh, these are some examples. And uh, this is how uh, our study, which has uh, going through the structure, the stretch panel is again lightweight uh, kind of thing. The stretch panel is this big panel, which is stretched uh, so that it will add a lot of strength. And also for if you put a paint, there is no waviness comes here. Uh, the quality of paint is good and structurally it's at a lot of value and it could not be stretched beyond certain point. Uh, so there is a way to do this entire work. So this is where when the engineering comes uh, into uh, our projects where everything is defined and a very good product is made. If you see uh, uh, the entire front fascia, the basal, uh, the light basals um, and then uh, the rear fascia and everything is made in uh, composites with uh, even the dashboards and interior panels uh, like this door panel and roof panel inner domes these are all composites which uh, is widely used uh, and help these vehicles to become uh, lightweight here uh, it is a, a 9 meter 12 meter and 40 meter bus there are certain commonization but of course uh, composite makes this flexibility that you can have an independent shape for each uh, each component, each uh, variant. So that is also one appreciable thing. So why should uh, people come to advantage? That's what our pitch is always like. We create intellectual property. Um, the design is always patented full and uh, customer uh, has a industrial design uh, copyrights. On it. Innovation, we always, every project is an innovation and we come across a lot of innovations in our own project. We will save a lot of time, thereby cost to our customers. We upgrade technology, see, that's why. Advantage is continuously looking for new technologies, new R&D materials uh, to incorporate in our products. Either it is in medical, Advantage is also into medical equipment, where we use lots of component composites in medical equipment also, X-ray machines and um, uh, other uh, areas. So we are one-stop R&D solution for design and development. And uh, we develop uh, two wheelers. Uh, but they are mass volume, so injection molding and sheet metal is there. But initial prototypes are used in uh, using composites, especially. Uh, these are three wheelers. Uh, uh, this is Atul Rick, and one is Euler uh, High Load. Recently, what we have designed, it is in Delhi. Uh, so these come, these are all launched vehicles. So we are doing uh, more of let's say four wheelers now and electric buses. So um, that is where we have got good knowledge in uh, using composites. Uh, and uh, as I said, that uh, good uh, surfacing. Uh, and we also develop uh, apps uh, for electric vehicle. And this is our core expertise. In an electric vehicle, if you are seeing here, uh, the battery, uh, whether it is a bus or a car, this is a four-wheeler uh, uh, LCV, uh, let's say, battery. That occupies major space and it is protected under structure and four direction, including a plate under, underneath where stones cannot pierce. So after that, the packaging is coming with the transaxle. This is uh, transaxle with the motor. Uh, 
uh, cradle. Uh, motor sticks on the axle is transaxial. Uh, this is uh, like this. And then other uh, traditional uh, suspension and steering systems are already there in the market. We also develop gearboxes for the electric motors. But this is beyond composites we develop. And, uh, and a lot of an analysis and design is happening in battery. And this is our presentation uh, regarding uh, the lightweight uh, in electric vehicle uh, buses, especially. And thank you for uh, Composite Excellence Center of Asia for giving us uh, this opportunity to present uh, our company uh, for all of you. Uh, and we would like to take any questions uh, from you. With uh, us, uh, uh, industry uh, veteran, Mr. Upendra sir is also there. So any questions are more welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Shritish. It was really a wonderful presentation. I believe next time I'll uh, get into a bus, the first thing I'll uh, see is K if any, any of the material can be, any of the thing can be replaced with composites or not. So I think uh, a really wonderful presentation. Uh, so with that, I, I open the uh, space for questions. You can put your questions in the chat box and uh, you can actually answer them. Okay, so we have the first question from Mr. Kalpesh. He's asking uh, specification of FRP material. So basically, it is always floating. Uh, the resins, GP resin, and uh, uh, the uh, fiberglass wool uh, are uh, these are all uh, different as per the component. For a uh, dashboard, we use uh, uh, surface matte cloth. So these resins, uh, uh, there are several varieties are there. You can go through uh, uh, the commonly available uh, uh, specifications, GP resin, uh, FR grade resins are there. Uh, we use and we have a hardener, uh, which is uh, available over the counter. As we are an industry, which we are also dependent on uh, resins available in the market, but we are not in deep research of developing our own resins. So it is what is available in the market only we are using as of now. Uh, so we have a question from Mohammed. He's asking any use case uh, where you reduce weight of one of the parts, like a case study or something. Yes. So if you see the uh, front fascia of uh, uh, entire bus uh, for uh, let's say this uh, green bus what we have done uh, we have reduced around let's say uh, uh, 15 kg uh, compared to the traditional FRP and uh, uh, structure uh, so that has uh, uh, that has been a great uh, uh, saving uh, uh, for one part that is the entire fa uh, fascia um, we can also provide you uh, with some, uh, uh, we have uh, one more company uh, as our, uh, let's say, uh, co collaborative this thing, uh, which is uh, which is also working on this. We can give case study of theirs uh, for you to get the exact numbers, how it is done. Thank you so much, uh, Sushar. The next question is... Uh... As these FRPs, SMCs are thermosets, how are you suggesting for the recyclability and afterlife of such composite parts? Are these green products, sir? So that is one, like a green products question is, like for every composite material, I, I always hear this question. So, uh, so basically, we know that this is not uh, uh, easily uh, recyclable with soil, but the new techniques have emerged. Uh, we, uh, whatever the waste we produce of this compost, we give it to a thrasher. That uh, uh, thrasher uh, is splitting all this thing into micro particles and using on the road construction. Basically, oh. if you are, uh, if you come to Pune and other places, uh, the contractors are in uh, full demand um, uh, for uh, these materials. Because uh, the, in road, we want to have a longer uh, and uh, uh, this kind of flexi materials like tar and other things, bitumen and tar. So uh, uh, like if in construction also GRC, like uh, 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 these composites are used for a uh, 200 years, 300 years, uh, the road will be there. There will be a lot of repair and maintenance is there. So for that purpose, uh, it is repurposed, not recycled. It is repurposed in that way. 
uh, we feel okay to use them not feel very guilty of uh, using them understood understood uh, so uh, thank you for the answer uh, the next question is from mr dr raju shukla he is asking what are the regulation standards the company is following in terms of safety of people fire safety accident safety etc yes uh, this is a very valid question one of our partners uh, got the entire uh, composite uh, factory uh, was under fire uh, it is totally burned down because it is highly flammable so number one um, uh, well ventilated because composites always gets lot of fumes so uh, the the wherever we have a factory where we have all uh, uh, the uh, air circulation is taken care it's always sucks out the air and uh, goes second thing is all the people will use uh, the gloves and uh, uh, handle uh, frp uh, in a way that it will not they will inhale or uh, it will be stuck to hands that is one important thing and uh, third is there should not be cluttering of things there should be ha- uh, having a free space where people can easily go and out go and come and, th- and uh, having the fire safety uh, systems installed in your factory uh and you should not combine your composites with other inflammatory like welding uh, uh we see it, typically if you come to uh, pune advances we have three units in one unit we have fabrication and other things but composites are done totally in a different unit where uh, there is no fire uh, uh, kind of uh, things are uh, taken and storage of resins especially uh one good thing that municipal uh, uh, corporation takes note of uh, these resins it cannot be stocked more than uh, certain capacity uh, and if you are if you want to use that they have, we have to take permission from them and uh, you have to show how you are storing them properly so in that way it is safe to use uh, uh, composites uh, and if you if you mismanage and it is a very dangerous uh, proposition absolutely Uh, i think that also answers the question of dr amrish but guzar sir he is from navrashna he asked can you tell about the fire hazards using composites so uh, definitely uh, resin is a highly inflammable it need to be treated so is petrol so is diesel so uh, when you are handling them you have to definitely use but once a part is made um, it is not having that much of inflammability but there are fr grade fire retardant uh, plastics are also there reinforced plastics are also there so uh, i nothing is assumed safe nothing is assumed safe the entire uh, like similarly plastics uh, even injection molding parts if you uh, uh, see uh, after the parts uh, the way it is already treated is not like a raw material they are packed nicely and kept in storage and instantly sent to the customer and utilized in production but if you see the major hazard is in raw material handling and storage of raw material there certain bylaws are already there with the industry uh thank you so much sir, for the answer the next question is from mr ikrash he is asking for the batteries in ev is the base also frp or ai is more suitable to hold the weight of batteries batteries are generally worked uh, in aluminum uh, structure nowadays uh, or sheet metal uh, where it requires to be sealed ip uh, ip67 uh, it should be sealed yeah. in that case uh, yeah aluminum is uh, better but both the cases are we are going with even plastic as well as with aluminum also aluminum but composite battery boxes are currently being made uh, with rtm or sm smc process where the, it it looks like injection molding and it is been silicon uh, sealed all over so the composites are really made uh, really good for battery fr grade fire retardant grade composites which you need to use thank you uh, there is another question from mohammed uh, what are the verification method for the frp uh see frp uh, the way it is right now is non standard uh, so verification wise the quality of resin uh, the mixture what you use uh, you need to create a small lab for yourself where you test it uh, uh, what is the curing time uh, what is the strength so that we have anyway created because whoever uses it uh, uh, 
they have an understanding of proportions. Uh, the, uh, proportion understanding is said. And second thing, part verification validation, if you're talking about that. Uh, so you can uh, utilize uh, uh, that auto cluster in Pune is there. You can supply your part and they can actually uh, uh, tell you the strength of the material and flammability of that material by testing. And But for your own case, for your own case, um, you can use uh, analysis softwares where composites also nowadays has uh, the power uh, that they can, numbers are given so that uh, you can actually uh, make assume and uh, get nearby structural validation. So there is a simulation uh, uh, um, that's all systems, multi-physics simulation. So if you give the composite to the, uh, it will tell that what is the strength of the plastic, so the complete uh, composite. That is and so many, is, uh, so, so lot of uh, many tools have come. So many things are there in the market. We are not advocating anything one, but the thing is one is software validation, other is physical validation, which, uh, which is required to that. Uh, if I hope that uh, I could answer that. Yeah. So there's a good question from uh, Hilal ma'am. Uh, yesterday we had a great symposium on 3D printing. It was by Massive with 3D. So uh, her question is, is the EV bus produced by 3D printing? Like, can it be produced by 3D printing? So basically it, it can be uh, definitely produced one of a time. Like see, you can say a rocket or a satellite or moon lander. Definitely I can say 3D printing, carbon fiber 3D printing can do. But if you think about the cost, see the bus or even a car, what is the end cost? So, uh, and 3D printing is definitely utilized in one of a kind uh, uh, products, but uh, normally, uh, let's say for a production process, uh, very much defined. Composites are evolved from so many decades. Uh, for production process, uh, 3D printing is uh, still not uh, fully utilized. Uh, maybe like if you talk about having a airport shuttles, uh, which are, let's say, 200. So instead of making them uh, with tooling, you can definitely print them uh, 200 for like a Dubai air transfer kind of thing. So those kind of pro projects, it is possible. So, uh, thank you so much. There are, there are so many questions, uh, but we are running out of time. So what we can do is uh, we'll uh, get back to you with all your answers, either through mail, mail or something. So sure. uh, after the symposium, uh, we'll be sharing you a feedback form. So there you can mention your uh, questions and everything, which we'll revert and mail with you. So thank you so much once again for joining us today. Uh, thank you, Mr. Satish, uh, for uh, like sharing great inputs on lightweighting of EV bus. Uh, I'll request uh, Hiral ma'am to uh, give a vote of thanks. Over to you, ma'am. Yeah. Thank you, Prashant. So um, that was a very uh, informative session. So let me formally end the session with a vote of thanks. So esteemed speakers, Mr. Satish uh, sir, Mr. Upen sir, uh, faculty colleague, participants, and uh, dear students. Uh, it's my privilege to propose a vote of thanks uh, on this event. Uh, I, Dr. Hiral Parikh, on behalf of Mechanical Engineering Department, uh, School of Engineering and Technology, Nagrashan University, and uh, uh, on behalf of Composite Excellence Center of Asia, I extend a very heartly vote of thanks to the honorable delegates who uh, blessed us with their experience, uh, took out their valuable time from their busy schedule and uh, share their valuable knowledge with us. I uh, thank to Mr. Uh, Satish Shongiri sir, uh, who brief with the sharing their uh, products, services and uh, innovative product designs. Uh, he gave uh, insight of requirement of composite materials in the EV systems also cover the broad view of the composite manufacturing process that used in the EV bus design. I am sure that the students are definitely going to get the advantage of this. Uh, I'm, I'm very thankful to um, uh, Sika Asia, Dr. R.K. Singh sir, uh, Prashant for organizing this event. Uh, I express my uh, gratitude to Dr. Amrish Padgujar, uh, Head School of Engineering and Technology, Mechanical Engineering Department, Navrashna University. All the faculty members of mechanical engineering department and the electrical en engineering department who participated in this uh, um, uh, in this webinar, I heartily congratulate to all the participants for their active participation in this event and uh, uh, making this event a successful event. And I wish that we will connect in future too uh, for uh, similar uh, events. 
thank you everyone thank you thank you so much ma'am uh, thank you uh, i request uh, mr sreesh to just uh, say last kind few words to us i was on mute sorry so yeah. uh, it was great uh, interacting with you all uh, basically in industry we are um, day in and day out working on these uh, materials and uh, definitely with academic research and uh, uh, institution like uh, sika we also learn uh, much more depth and use our entire uh, purpose of uh, uh, collaboration or something is to apply what we learn and uh, see the testing but composites has got Uh, mostly you test yourself and then develop uh, uh, much more in depth process and there is a lot of surprises that uh, you may invent something and uh, have a patent on your name uh, so i encourage students uh, that this is a future technology uh, uh, in multiple areas not only automobile in construction and other uh, fields also so i will encourage that experiment a lot in real world Uh, with the chemistry materials uh, and uh, combination of uh, several things so that um, the indian um, scenario uh, uh, let's say right now we are little behind uh, let's say the world research but it's okay like we are getting there and all you young young minds um, uh, should contribute uh, uh, towards research and then uh, become very very successful there is a lot of things in railways uh, i have not spoke about a lot of uh, railways there is a defense aviation so those those are all performance materials so so if you get get into those kind of uh, things it will be really interesting as per my knowledge uh, this has got a very good future and all wish you all very best and thank you uh, prashant for organizing this thank you and have a wonderful time thank you thank you so much satish sir it was really wonderful uh, hearing from you yeah, and i absolutely agree with you that composites are the tomorrow and uh, we all know that uh, in in most of the fields and, and composites is something people are not talking about a lot but it's it's something it was invented 40 years ago but still uh, we find that there is lack of knowledge about composites uh, and uh, uh, we believe that there is so much that can be done in composite and that is the reason sika was formed uh, to uh, bridge together bridge the gaps between the industries the research organizations the uh, uh like the great great uh, people of uh, like who have served for 30 like more than 25 years in composites so using their knowledge uh, uh, and and just just bridging the gap between everybody so that is what sika is doing and we are very much happy and uh, with that i quickly share uh, one thing uh, that we are doing so much for composites and there is one another thing that we are doing is uh, composite in national national conference uh, that is being uh, uh, that is going to be organized in the month of september uh, on 17th and 18th of september uh this we are doing in uh, in association with atira amdabad ssb isro uh, navrat university and uh, our managing partners are all in motion and bloom and creative uh, so this is a two day event where we are uh, going to invite many corporate uh, there will be uh, many uh, composite manufacturing companies who are going to exhibit themselves there will be many paper presentations there will be speakers there will be speakers from uh, there will be international speakers who will be joining us uh, and this is going to be one of its kind of event in, in in the field of composites in india and we are very, we are very much excited and uh, happy uh, that we are we are looking forward to uh, have it a very grand event so i i request everybody to please visit uh, sink.sikaasia.com to uh, consider registering yourselves and uh, visiting us uh, all the details you can find on the website so thank you today for joining us and uh, lastly i, I again thank hiral ma'am Uh, for the vote of thanks thank you so much number of students is we are so proud uh, that we have been doing uh, great collaboration events and uh, again i'm i'm happy that if we can do much more uh, in, in the coming uh, future uh, thank you mr sitish uh, advantage is doing really wonderful job i, I could see pictures of uh, uh, autos uh, three wheelers two wheelers and other uh, other vehicles as well so i think advantage is doing really really well uh, in light weighting uh, the vehicles uh, and as you all know that uh, the future of vehicles is hydrogen and uh, again like when you talk about hydrogen you cannot miss composites any day so uh, i think there is this there is a lot uh, a lot that is going to happen uh, with composites in the future so uh, thank you so much uh, i uh, and uh, uh, we'll uh, furnish more details about more symposiums in coming few days uh, so thank you so much mr sreesh mr ayer and thank you all the attendees for being so kind uh, this is uh, you, this is the the whole session is also a uh, youtube live 
so you can uh, revisit if you miss something you can just revisit uh, the sikka asia channel on youtube and uh, you can uh, go it and uh, all the questions that are unanswered i i promise that all the questions will be answered uh, if you uh, send send them to us by mail uh, we will ask mr satish uh, to just answer the answer them for us so thank you so much uh, thank you for joining us today uh, see you soon in the next web symposium thank you thank you all thank you